Not much was known about the Brandenburg Division after World War II. Only a handful of books seriously deal with the Brandenburgers, which served as special forces within the German Wehrmacht. It would go beyond the scope here to describe the Brandenburg Division in all its complexity and detail. The intent of this video is to provide an overview of the purpose, organization, and history of the Brandenburg Division. So, what made Brandenburg so different from other German army divisions? The order given by the chief of the Abwehr 2, Abwehr II, in 1940 should serve as an introductory statement. Quote, the task of Regiment Brandenburg is camouflaged combat against objects that are tactically, operationally, or economically important. It takes place where other units of the fighting force cannot or can no longer fight. The companies are made available to the army groups or armies. Their deployment changes accordingly. The development of this specially trained and difficult to replace force is only justified in extreme emergencies and only temporarily. With the transition to trench warfare, the units must be removed from the front. Close quote. First, let us dispel some misconceptions regarding the affiliation of Brandenburg. Neither the original Brandenburg Training Regiment for Special Assignment 800 nor the later division with the same name were probationary or so-called penal units. Such units were provided with numbers, starting with 5 or 9. For example, the 999th Africa Brigade was created as a penal military unit of the German Army in October of 1942. Here is a monument at Stetten am Kaltenmarkt in Baden-Württemberg where that unit was set up. Also, Brandenburg was never part of the Waffen-SS. From day one, Brandenburg was subordinate to the Military Intelligence Department II of German Abwehr II within the high command of the Wehrmacht. The term Abwehr applied to the German Military Intelligence Service up to the end of the Second World War. Therefore, we should first look at the tasks and structure of the Abwehr. This term Abwehr, which translates as defense, was the name of the department in the Reich's Ministry of War in the Berlin Bendlerstrasse. This ministry was responsible for intelligence procurement following the First World War, and the Abwehr's department's original activity in 1920 was described as defending and shielding the Reichswehr, the German army, against enemy intelligence services. Adolf Hitler's ascension to power in 1933 led to the rearmament and expansion of the Wehrmacht, and the tasks of the Abwehr were expanded. In 1939, the Abwehrabteilung, or department, became an Amtsgruppe, or office branch in the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, abbreviated OKW, that is, the High Command of the Wehrmacht. This Amtsgruppe was designated Amt Ausland Abwehr, or Foreign Office Defense. The Abwehr was initially under the command of Naval Captain Konrad Patzig, who was replaced in 1935 by Naval Captain Wilhelm Canaris. The office had its seat in the high command of the Wehrmacht in Berlin on Tirpitz Ufer 7576. Today, the imposing building the so-named Benderblock on the Reichspitz Ufa in Berlin Tiergarten, served as the Berlin headquarters of the Defense Ministry. In 1938, the Abwehr was reorganized. It now had three main sections, Abteilung Z, which means Central, or the Central Section, and this acted as the command center for the other two sections, as well as handling personnel and financial matters including the payments to agents. From 1938 to 1944, it was headed by Colonel, then Major General, Hans Oster. Oster was an early conspirator against Hitler and was arrested with Admiral Canaris and others in 1944. He was killed in the concentration camp Flossenberg in Bavaria in April 1945. The second section, Amtsgruppe Ausland, was the foreign branch, later named Foreign Intelligence Group. 
It was led by Vice Admiral Leopold Birkner and had several functions, ranging from the evaluation of foreign military, liaison with the high command and other branches of the armed forces, to matters regarding the press and even colonial issues. The third section was comprised of the three operational Abwehr departments. Abwehr 1, the Foreign Intelligence Service Department. This was led by Lieutenant Colonel Heinz Pickenbrock from 1937 until he was captured by the Russians in Czechoslovakia shortly before the capitulation in May 1945. He remained a POW in Russia until the fall of 1955. His successor was General Staff Colonel Georg Hansen. This officer participated from 1943 in the plans for the Hitler assassination attempt. After the failure of the July 20th, 1944 plot, he was arrested and hanged in September at Berlin Plötzensee. Abwehr 1 was the main espionage department that performed all tasks associated with foreign espionage. The four main groups for operational work were Army, Navy, Luftwaffe, and Technical Army Intelligence, but also included industrial espionage and collecting intelligence in the broad field of modern technology. Group leaders and consultants were reappointed officers of the reserve, like Colonel Oster, seen right, or Captain Heinz on the left, the so-called supplementary or agensels, or simply e-officers. Many had lived abroad for a long time and spoke foreign languages. They also possessed the necessary passion to work in this field, which was not to everyone's taste. The intelligence tasks were assigned by the general staffs of the three branches of the Wehrmacht, Army, Navy, and Air Force, via foreign armies departments. These orders were received by the chief of the Abwehr, Admiral Wilhelm Canaris, and from there were assigned to the relevant Abwehr department. The second Abwehr department we will discuss is the third department, the Counterintelligence Abteilung 3. This department, Abwehr 3, secured the German Wehrmacht against attacks by foreign espionage services. It issued a series of orders that regulated the handling of classified materials and secret documents. It was led, until the end of 1934, by Kurt Hemer, then, until the spring of 1939, by Lieutenant Colonel Rudolf Bamler. After the war, Bamler settled in East Germany and worked as a Stasi police officer uh, from 1946 until his retirement in 1962. Bamler also held the rank of Major General in the precursor to the East German People's Army, the Barracked People's Police. His successor was Lieutenant Colonel, later Lieutenant General, Franz Eckhart von Bentivengi, seen here in 1941 with Admiral Canaris at the Eastern Front. Finally, there was the Abwehr 2 Department. It is within this department that Brandenburg was located. The mission of Abwehr 2 was, quote, the exploitation of the discontented minority groups in foreign countries for f intelligence purposes, close quote, short for sabotage and subversion. The commanders were, first in 1938, Captain Helmuth Grosskurth, an early conspirator against the National Socialist regime. This honorable man was one of the first officers who joined the military resistance against Hitler and died as a colonel in a Russian POW camp in 1943. From the end of 1938-39 until 1943, Abwehr 2 was led by Lieutenant Colonel, later Major General, Erwin von Lohusen Vivremont, who was later one of the key witnesses at the Nuremberg trial. Finally, from 1943 to 1944, the department was run by Colonel Wesel Freitag von Loringhoven. This officer committed suicide near his operational base in East Prussia following the failed attempt to kill Hitler of July 20th, 1944, that had been made by his friend Colonel von Stauffenberg. Abwehr 2 was divided into Group 1, Minorities, and Group 2, Special Measures. The latter, as already mentioned, included the Brandenburg units. Here you see a recruiting poster from 1940. Abwehrabteilung 2 was responsible for those very special tasks of a modern war. It was tasked with the planning, 
preparation and implementation of acts of sabotage and insurgency, i.e. the undermining and revolutionizing of opposing countries. Also, this group was responsible for counter-sabotage, that is, securing the German military and economy from acts of sabotage against armaments and supply. This task succeeded as there were no serious acts of sabotage in Germany until the end of the war. The term Abwehrswei will be heard here again and again as it was responsible for most of the Brandenburg operations until 1943. For example, in 1942, a commando operation of the OKW was set up to seize the oil reserves of the Grozny and Maikop refineries in the Caucasus region and prevent their destruction by the retreating Soviet Red Army. This was called the Shamil Operation. Most publications describe Shamil as a commando operation of the Brandenburg Division. This, however, is factually incorrect. The operation was run by Abwehrsvei using its own Brandenburg units, which provided all 15 enlisted men and NCO of the commando group. All other participants came from other Abwehrsvei personnel or other Abwehr branches, including the leader of the commando, Oberleutnant Lange, a member of Abwehrsvei assigned to Brandenburg. The operation was to take place three to eight days ahead of the advancing German troops during the 1942 summer offensive, with the aim of securing the refineries from destruction. In addition, the objectives taken by the Shamil group were to be secured by insurgent locals. This commando action, carried out by 11 German soldiers and 19 Caucasian volunteers, was intended to prepare and spark an uprising in the Soviet territories of Chechnya and Ingushia in the Caucasus. But before I go further, let's have a look at the beginning of this mysterious troop with the name Brandenburgers. This video will illuminate the varied history of this unit from the creation of the original 800th Constructional Training Company for a special assignment, set up in 1939, through the formation of the Brandenburg Panzer Grenadier Division in the Panzer Corps Gross Deutschland in 1944-45. Finally, the video deals with the period from mid-1944 onward, in which the specialist Brandenburgers reported to Otto Skwaseni's so-called SS hunting units. Already in the First World War, numerous Germans served as part of the intelligence service, working as what is commonly called spies. After the Lost War, these agents were left abandoned and penniless. Support and benefits enjoyed by regular soldiers did not apply to them. When Admiral Wilhelm Canaris became head of Abwehr, he created personnel files of agents in order to mobilize them into the Wehrmacht immediately in time of war. This would give Abwehr personnel the status and benefits of soldiers. Later, it was out of these personnel files that the Brandenburg Verfügungsabteilungen, or special duty sections, were built. In those sections were numerous expatriate and ethnic Germans. They knew the languages, spoke the local dialects, and had friends in the opposing camp. In addition, these men had a keen eye for world problems. During World War I, these ethnic Germans had returned to Germany by adventurous routes to fight for their fatherland but they were almost always put into front-line regiments where they fell in the great material battles and their special knowledge wasted. To prevent such a strategically useful group of specialists from being used pointlessly in a possible war, Canaris had come up with a new concept. Canaris knew that a future war would be waged using completely different methods than the stagnant lines and trenches of the First World War. The key words of this new concept were insurgents, and sabotage. However, the conservative-minded army personnel section rarely recognized the possibilities that the Brandenburg concept offered. They remained hostile and suspicious of these special forces. Therefore, both Abwehr Svei and the subordinate Brandenburgers often had to fend for themselves when it came to preparing for so-called Kleinkrieg, or small war, as guerrilla warfare was known. This was not an easy task, as such measures and plans found very little approval from the conservative supreme command of the army, and this led to a latent distrust by the army command. A further difficulty was the double subordination of Brandenburg, under Admiral Canaris and the chief of Abwehr Svei, but 
also under the respective Wehrmacht commander appointed by the Army Personnel Section. An example. In 1940, an officer, Lieutenant Colonel Heiling von Lanzenauer, was appointed the first commander of the Brandenburg Regiment. He was a brave officer already decorated in the First World War. However, Lanzenauer's main qualification was, according to his assessments, primarily in the leadership of training units or NCO schools. Therefore, this appointed commander naturally lacked the understanding of a commando unit with all its unusual methods and peculiarities. One of these peculiarities was the very strict secrecy maintained around this unit. In addition to this was the obvious unclear command structure. Furthermore, the unit designation for special use often led to confusion with the punishment battalions, which carried numbers 500, 900, 999. Corps and army commanders assumed that the Brandenburgers were criminals released on parole. Those were, altogether, quite a burden for this unconventional troop which was so unusual for the German army. The story of Brandenburg began immediately before the beginning of the Second World War, which started on September 1, 1939. Reserve Lieutenant Siegfried Grabert received orders from Admiral Canaris and the head of Abwehrabteilung II, Colonel von Lahusen, to set up a company of ethnic German volunteers. It was named Bauler Company zu besonderen Verwendung 800. In English, the 800th Construction Training Company for Special Assignment. During the Polish campaign, the company was relocated to Brandenburg an der Havel, a location chosen by chance. As the company paymaster was searching for a garrison, he came across the empty General Feldzogmeister barracks on Magdeburgerstrasse in Brandenburg an der Havel. It was at the company's Christmas party in 1939 that they gave themselves the name Brandenburgers. At the beginning of 1940, Captain Theodor von Hippel set up the expanded 800th Special Duties Construction Training Battalion with three companies in Brandenburg on the Havel. Von Hippel had been an officer in World War I under General Paul von Letlau Vorbeck in German East Africa and was therefore no stranger to adventure. His adjutant, First Lieutenant Wilhelm Johannes, came to the battalion from an anti-aircraft unit of the Luftwaffe. The original first company, previously known as the German Company on Special Assignment 100, was stationed at Baden by Wien in the Vienna Woods. The second company was stationed in Brandenburg. The third was in Munster Eifel in Western Germany. The personnel of the battalion was made up of Upper Silesians, Baltic Germans, ethnic Germans from the Banat. There were also Transylvanians, Sudeten Germans, South Tyrolians, and Germans from the old colonies of East and Southwest Africa, the so-called African and Palestinian Germans. These latter two groups had been deported to Germany by the British via neutral ships at the start of the war. They were all exclusively volunteers with the appropriate language skills. Later, more and more Reich Germans joined, and from 1941 also volunteer Russian legionnaires and so-called combat interpreters. The recruitment was shrouded in mystery and attracted many who were not interested in the daily strict German military routine and those who were looking for adventure. But of course, the Special Duties Construction Training Battalion, with its home in the General Feldzogmeister barracks, was also a German Wehrmacht unit. However, the emphasis was not placed on the goose step, at least not for the first two years. Due to the large intake of recruits, by mid-1940 the battalion was bursting at the seams. Accordingly, on June 1, 1940, the unit was established as the 800th Special Duties Construction Training Regiment for Special Duties. By this time, the soldiers were often simply known as the Brandenburgers. With this expansion to regimental strength, specialist knowledge of foreign language no longer played a decisive role. However, recruiting from other Wehrmacht units was still volunteer only. For assignments on the Eastern Front, the 1st Battalion of Brandenburg was provided with the following personnel. The 1st Company was mostly composed of Russian-speaking Balts. The 2nd Company included predominantly Southwest and Southeast Africans. The 3rd Company was made up of Czech-speaking Sudeten Germans. Finally, the 4th Company contained Polish-speaking Upper Silesians with one platoon of paratroopers. 
Later, this platoon became the 16th Paratroop Company, and in 1943, the Paratrooper Battalion Brandenburg. The 2nd Mountain Infantry Battalion, set up near the city of Baden in Lower Austria, was stationed in Weilberg Castle in the Hotel Stephanie in Bad Voslau. It was intended for the eastern and southeastern fronts. The 3rd Battalion, at Duren, at the Panzerkaserne, was intended for the western and southwestern front. In addition to Sudeten Germans, its personnel largely consisted of North and South Tyrolians, Salzburgers, Lower Styrians, all Austrians. The training of the volunteers was intense and specialized. In addition to the classic infantry training, there was intensive combat engineer training, and special training was provided at the Abwehrswei Sabotage School in Krinzgut near Brandenburg. From 1943, there was a division combat school in Freiburg in Breskau. One focus was explosive training and blasting under often very risky conditions. The so-called blasting familiaration drills were conducted with 15 kilograms of TNT at two meters distance from the soldiers. Attack drills were also practiced through activated minefields, as well as live fire combat exercises. During this training, it quickly became apparent that there were no sufficient Wehrmacht regulations that could properly be applied to commando special operations. Therefore, during the war, English and Russian regulations for partisan warfare were used. The motto of the Brandenburgers was, when it comes to saving German blood, any means is right. The British commando units and the Special Air Service served as an operational model. These commando units, however, enjoyed a much greater appreciation and support than Brandenburg ever received. British Special Operation Executive funds were nearly unlimited and enjoyed support at the highest level. For the approach from the sea and from the air, there was a Brandenburg Coastal Pursuit Company and the 15th Paratroop Company. Of great importance was also a well-equipped signals troop. Brandenburgers, with language skills and knowledge of countries, were called in by OKW Foreign Section 2 for special tasks, as, for example, the Shamil mission. When necessary, objectives were approached in so-called full or half camouflage, i.e. in enemy uniforms or with pieces of uniform. Here, we see the Brandenburgers camouflaged as soldiers of the Red Army. Also possible was the use of civilian clothing or traditional costume customary in the country of operation. When necessary, captured vehicles and weapons were used when available. However, Brandenburg mostly fought in German uniforms as infantry or combat engineer strike forces of up to company strength. For this, the units of Brandenburg were subordinated to the Army Corps and divisions in whose sections their objectives were located. Quite often, however, the commanders of these corps and divisions used the Brandenburgers under their command as stopgappers. They burned up the commandos to spare their own troops. But when the Brandenburgs achieved a spectacular success, for reasons of secrecy, they had to fade back into namelessness. That was the nature of their work. Often, the hosting unit was rewarded with medals and decorations for the deeds of the Brandenburgers. Also, the ambiguities of command structure left their mark on the spirit and mood of the Brandenburgers. Furthermore, the excesses of the plans made at headquarters in Berlin, the inadequate equipment provided, as well as the frequent misuse of these specialist troops during their assignments, was not conducive to the morale of these special operation soldiers. And another important circumstance weighed on their minds. They were trained to fight in the not yet or no longer battleground, that is, ahead of or behind battle lines. This involved sometimes wearing enemy's uniform. And that also meant that sometimes it was necessary to fight outside the rules of war. This had never happened before in the history of modern German armies, nor did it correspond to the imagination of the normal German soldier. But the soldiers of Brandenburg, as special and elite units of the Wehrmacht, also knew when it came to the methods they practiced, they were in the very best of company. The special forces of the Wehrmacht operated in a similar fashion to the French or British commandos, the SAS, Special Air Services, and in North Africa to the highly praised Long Range Desert Group. The USA had and still has its ranger units, and numerous NATO countries also maintain commandos and special operation units. 
All of these use elements of ruse and surprise when deployed directly behind the front or in the rear combat areas. The German Bundeswehr calls their special forces Kommando Spezialkrafte, KSK, and the Russians maintain very strong Spetsnitz units. It would go beyond the scope here to list all the missions that Brandenburger carried out in almost all fronts, Western, Middle, Eastern Europe, in Russia, and in Africa. Therefore, the following operations should only be examples. 1940, in Denmark, shortly before the invasion, soldiers from the 800 Special Duties Construction Training Battalion, Brandenburg, surprised the Danish guards at the bridge over the belt, taking the objective with no losses on either side. In Belgium, disguised as tourists, Brandenburgers in Luxembourg and in the Ardennes made a close reconnaissance of the Belgian positions. In the Netherlands, the first major camouflage mission in Dutch uniforms took place as a German attack opened on the 10th of May, 1940. Brandenburgers, disguised as Dutch MPs, were used to take the strategically important bridges across the Maas at Mazarek and Roosteren along the border with Belgium. Perhaps most famously, in an early morning raid, the commando under First Lieutenant Walther took the vital Maas bridge at Gennep in Holland, close by the German border. Shortly thereafter, General von Bock's Army Group B rolled over it unhindered. In preparation for the planned invasion of Great Britain, known as Operation Sea Lion, parts of the regiment moved to the Theodore Corner Barracks in Aachen in July 1940. Then, from August to November, to La Havre, Belgium, and later to the Panzer Barracks at Doren. The English-speaking soldiers, like those of the second company seen here, came to Ostend and Newport in preparation to jump on the pier and port of Dover in disguised uniform. For months they stayed idle at different civilian locations, as here, from August 28th to mid-October 1940, at the Home for Children, or at this villa in East Dunkirk, training with pneumatic boats, enjoying themselves as if on vacation. They visited the battlefield of Dunkirk, where the defense and the dramatic evacuation of the British and other Allied forces in Europe had taken place from the 26th of May to the 4th of June, 1940. The loss of material was enormous. The British Expeditionary Force abandoned on the beach huge supplies of ammunition, field guns, anti-aircraft guns, anti-tank guns, some 11,000 machine guns, nearly 700 tanks, 20,000 motorcycles, 45,000 motor cars and lorries. The British managed to save much of his army, but the material loss was devastating. Here, the Brandenburgs of the 2nd Company with a liberated Bedford MW General Service truck and a Morris. They used the trucks for their visits to World War I battlefields at Ghent, Bruges, Ypres, and also the German cemetery at Langemark. Here, in 1914, regiments of advancing young German volunteers were mowed down by the concentrated fire of defenders. As an example, just one of the units, the 244th Reserve Infantry Regiment, lost 51 of her 57 officers and 71% of her 2,629 NCOs and enlisted men. Apart from the plans for Operation Sea Lion in late summer of 1940, the 1st and 3rd Battalion were assessed for suitability for deployment in the tropics. In fact, later, a tropical battalion of five companies commanded by Captain von Konen was sent to North Africa. But on the orders of Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, commander of the Africa Corps, no camouflaged operations were allowed. Parts of the 2nd Battalion took part in the Balkan Campaign, Supposedly, the Brandenburg lieutenant, Grantbert, was the first to hoist the German war flag on the Acropolis in 1941. Before the attack on the Soviet Union, Brandenburg units were relocated to the assembly positions of the three German army groups, North, Central, and South. There, they carried out several high-casualty missions shortly before the invasion began on June 22, 1941. Here, we see the survivors of a torn-up Brandenburg platoon after one of these missions. After the beginning of the invasion of Russia, Brandenburgers, disguised as Russian officers, misdirected Red Army units on their advance routes, sending them in the wrong directions. At the beginning of the Russian campaign, 
A Brandenburg company took two important bridges near Dünneburg and held them until the German tanks arrived the next day. In this company, only one driver and some soldiers acting as accompanying Red Army officers spoke Russian. The rest of the Brandenburgers on the captured truck only wore Russian coats over their German uniforms. Similarly, in July 1942, Lieutenant of the Reserve Adrian von Fulkazam took the dam over the Masrich River in southern Russia, which forms the border between Europe and Asia. For this deed, he was awarded the Knight's Cross. Fulkazam fell as a Waffen SS captain in January of 1945. During an attack on the Russian occupied Estonian islands of Zarima in September 1941, a half company of the 2nd Battalion from Duren was assigned to take the island's dominant artillery battery. They used two platoons, one with gliders, the other with Estonian fishing boats. The Brandenburgs attacked from the west in German uniforms. The operation quickly failed, and the company suffered great losses. Nevertheless, the enemy was deceived about the real target to the east. The Russians withdrew, thus saving the 61st German Infantry Division, which attacked from the other side of the island, from heavy losses. In the further course of the war, a Persian, and as seen here, an Arab company were set up. There was also the Indian Legion, Assad Hind, Free India. However, none of these units ever played a decisive role. From 1942 on, Brandenburgers were increasingly used by the Wehrmacht commanders as infantry wherever there was need of reinforcement. This dissipation of forces, coupled with boundless plans, repeatedly led to heavy losses that went far beyond those of special operations for which Brandenburg was designed. Responsible for this misuse were Abwehrsvei and the division's headquarters staff. So while Berlin indulged in global commando fantasies, the Brandenburgers at the front were being used as cannon fodder in order to save the blood of the regular Wehrmacht units to which they were subordinated. Often regular Wehrmacht commanders did not always approve or understand how best to use the specialized Brandenburg troops. In December 1941, the light company Tromsdorf, named after their commander, was deployed in Finland. This unit of trained skiers was initially organized at the Zussen military training area. They were equipped with 10.5 centimeter recoilless guns, which were pulled by dog sleds. In total, the unit had 60 dogs, including 10, trained to attack and take down guard posts. The model for this unit was the Finnish Sissi Battalion, trained for reconnaissance, sabotage, and guerrilla warfare. This light company, Tromsdorf, was supposed to attack and destroy power stations, bridges, and military quarters in the rear combat zones. General Dietl, commander of the Army High Command in Lapland, was skeptical about this type of operation. On Easter 1942, the first mission took place. Together with two mountain troop task force, the Tromsdorf company was supposed to force a breakthrough to Murmansk. But the operation failed. For six days, the light company wandered around behind enemy lines. After their return, General Dietl demanded that the high command assign the Tromsdorf company to be used as an infantry combat unit during the operations at Kistinki. In the summer of 1942, the light company Tromsdorf was reorganized. It now consisted of Germans, Finns, and Russians. The latter had been recruited from the Elven SPOW camp, not far from Kirkenes, in northern Norway. In August 1942, a successful mission took place with flexible boats taken from the Berlin Wannsee. The objective was to cut the strategically important Merman Railway between Murmansk and Leningrad, located 300 kilometers, around 180 miles, behind enemy lines. The railway was blown up in 14 places and rail traffic was severely disrupted. After the return of the commandos, each of the 45 soldiers was presented with the Iron Cross by General Dietl with the address, To My German Partisans. In the second half of the year, the aforementioned Abwehr Operation Shamil took place in the Caucasus with the participation of Brandenburgers. On November 20th, 1942, the Brandenburg Division was renamed again as Special Task Force Brandenburg. The additional designation of On Special Assignment 800 was no longer used. 
At this point, the all-volunteer nature of the unit was no longer adhered to, and conscripts were also recruited. As their fourth company, each battalion received a legionnaire's company made up of Russians, Ukrainians, Caucasians, and other Soviet ethnicities. These soldiers wore their national colors on the left sleeve of the uniform. But the inability of the German cadre personnel to deal with the mentality of the legionnaires, as well as discriminatory regulations from above regarding leave, curfew, awards, etc., led to the resentment and the growing influence of communist elements in these companies. Legionnaire companies often marched through Brandenburg and Duren singing Red Army songs. During a mission in the sector of the Central Army Group in the summer of 1943, all fourth companies mutinied. After they murdered the German cadre personnel, they went over to the enemy. By this time, Brandenburg was being used almost exclusively as regular infantry. They were once again given a new designation, Jäger Division Brandenburg, meaning Light Infantry Division. Finally, on April 1st, 1943, Brandenburg was withdrawn from Abwehrsvai and placed directly under the Wehrmacht Operations Staff. The only exception to this was the 5th Regiment, which remained in the Abwehr as the Instructional Regiment Kurfürst. Until the end of the war, these soldiers felt themselves as the last true keepers of the Brandenburg Special Operations tradition. As for the other four rifle regiments of the Jäger Division Brandenburg, the Balkans, namely Yugoslavia, became their main area of operation. Here, regiments were used to fight Tito's partisans in the mountains, and, like here, in the Sujetska Canyon. In Freiburg, back in Germany, a combat school was set up under Major Banson. There, in three-week courses, the participants were given basic instruction in explosives, blasting methods, and sabotage. After Colonel von Stauffenberg's July 20th attempt to blow up Hitler in the Führer's Wolfschanks headquarters in East Prussia, the last regrouping of the Jäger Division took place in the Belgrade area in September of 1944. Now the Jäger Division Brandenburg became the Panzergrenadier Division Brandenburg, an armored infantry division with two rifle regiments. But with this reorganization into a normal division, Brandenburg was transformed in the most un-Brandenburg way possible. Neither her origin, nature, nor training matched that of a pure Wehrmacht infantry division. For tank and armored infantry training, some of the combat units were transferred to the Irish military training camp in East Prussia, while divisional units were re-established at the Angerburg training area, also in East Prussia. Since the September reorganization, the soldiers of the division were authorized to wear a dark green cuff title with the inscription Brandenburg. Caution! The black cuff titles offered on the internet are, without exception, worthless fakes. On December 20th, 1944, Brandenburg merged with Panzergrenadier Division Großdeutschland to form the Army Panzer Corps Großdeutschland. Despite the unfamiliar way of combat, the Brandenburgers proved themselves in the fighting retreat from East Prussia via the Wattegau to Silesia and Saxony. At the end of 1945, they made a successful counterattack near Bautzen. Then, after a rail transport through Czechoslovakia in early May 1945, the division fought a defensive combat near Olmutz in Moravia to secure the flank of the retreating Central Army Group. Finally, on May 9, 1945, the Panzergrenadier Division Brandenburg was disbanded by the division commander Major General Schulte Hoythaus near Deutschbrot in eastern Bohemia. More than a few Brandenburgers were killed following their surrender by incited Czech mobs. Before that, many Brandenburgers had been taken prisoner by the Red Army. Others were extradited as POWs to the Soviets by the U.S. Army. There, the Brandenburgs automatically received 25 years imprisonment. Many did not return. The few survivors were on the last homecoming POW transports in 1955. These were made possible by German Chancellor Konrad Adenauer during his visit in Moscow. Here, the mother of a Heimkehrer, homecomer, thanking the Chancellor for negotiating the return of her son on 14 September 1955. In November 1944, SS Obersturmbannführer, Lieutenant Colonel, Otto Skorzeny assumed the inheritance of Brandenburg. His so-called SS hunting units had their headquarters in Schloss Friedenthal near Berlin. Many former Brandenburgers joined these hunting units. 
Scorsani mentions the number as 1,800 Brandenburgers in his published memoir, Special Missions. However, U.S. files count approximately 20 officers and 110, 130 NCOs and men. Other sources, such as surviving Brandenburgers, give the probable correct number as between 300 and 400. The former Brandenburgers, now with SS rank, were greatly misused during the operations with these five SS hunting units, some of which were outside of any military ethics. During the Battle of the Bulge, or the Ardennes Offensive, as the Germans called it, in December of 1944, the last great special operation of the war took place under the leadership of Skorzeny. In that operation, called Action Greif, Waffen-SS soldiers, including many former Brandenburgers, appeared behind the lines, dressed as U.S. Army soldiers. However, for various reasons, this operation failed completely. At the end of the war, thousands of former Brandenburg soldiers had fallen, or were imprisoned by the Allies. Many did not return to Germany, others only very late. But it is known that many Brandenburgers managed to camouflage themselves in time. They were later to be found in the various foreign armed forces, but also in the secret services, including the German ones. There they picked up where they left off at the end of the war. And several Brandenburg veterans also passed their specialized knowledge to the Bundeswehr, which was established in 1955. An example is the former captain and battalion leader in the 2nd Jäger Regiment Brandenburg, the bearer of the Knight's Cross, Eckhart Affeld. He retired in 1981 as Brigadier General. This concludes the review of what is probably the most unusual troop that Germany has seen to date. From the 800th Special Duties Construction Training Company in 1939, to the Brandenburg Panzer Grenadier Division in 1945, these soldiers were misused in a criminal war that was to change the world. Many of their superiors were in the resistance and were murdered in prison or concentration camps run by the National Socialist regime. They fought in all theaters of the war. Their graves are scattered everywhere. Their names are mostly forgotten. Their tracks are gone.